Let's jump right into something truly exciting today, really at the, uh, the frontier of artificial intelligence. Sounds good. We're taking a deep dive using a stack of source material. We've got research notes, bits from a recent paper, a briefing doc, all centered on this fascinating framework called SEAL. Right, SEAL, that's self-adapting language models. And it's, uh, it's a very academic concept, really trying to get at one of the core limitations in how these powerful AI, like large language models or LLMs, actually work right now. Exactly. And our mission, really, for this deep dive is to unpack the academic heart of SEAL. We want to get into the core ideas, the, you know, the truly innovative steps it's taking that go beyond how LLMs usually get trained. And crucially, why this research matters, why it's potentially so important for where AI development is headed. Yeah. I mean, think about it this way. We know LLMs are amazing at processing info they were trained on. But imagine an AI that doesn't just use knowledge, but learns how to learn better, how to internalize new stuff more effectively. Almost like teaching itself. The, the sources use this great analogy, like a human student preparing for an exam. They don't just read the textbook once. They right. take notes. They restructure things, maybe rewrite those notes to really understand the connections. That active learning process, that's kind of what's missing in standard LLMs. That self-directed adaptation. That's the academic innovation SEAL is trying to capture, right? Precisely. That's the core idea. So let's start there. What's the fundamental limitation, the big problem this research is tackling with current LLMs? Well, the main challenge, even with how powerful they are, is that once you finish that initial huge training run, the model's internal parameters, its weights, mm -hmm. they become pretty much static fixed. So they learn a massive amount up front, but then they don't really change their core understanding based on new things they encounter later. That's basically it. They're amazing snapshots of the data they saw, but they don't have this ongoing internal mechanism to say, deeply integrate a new fact in a way that permanently shifts how they operate. They can maybe reference it using in-context learning, but it's not baked in. Exactly. It doesn't fundamentally change those core parameters. It's not like it's updating its internal textbook based on every new article it reads. That active restructuring, that assimilation, hmm. it's not really there. And that's the academic gap SEAL's designed to fill. That student analogy really brings it on the active processing and integration. Right. Normally, we have to feed the model new data for fine-tuning, and we tell it how to learn from that data. SEAL tries to flip that. It wants the model to generate its own updates. Okay, so how does SEAL actually make an LLM self-adapt? What's the core mechanism here, academically speaking? Fundamentally, SEAL is a framework. It gives the LLM the capability not just to modify its own weights, but crucially, to learn how to optimize the process of adapting. The real innovative leap the academic breakthrough is letting the LLM generate its own data and instructions for those weight updates. It generates its own training signals. Wow, okay. That sounds like a big step towards autonomy. It really is. And the source material calls these self-generated instructions in data self-edits. Self-edits. Okay, tell us more. What exactly can these self-edits do? What kind of instructions are we talking about? So these self-edits are natural language outputs from the LLM itself. They tell the model how to change its own parameters, and they're quite flexible based on the paper. Okay. They can instruct the model on restructuring information. For instance, taking a paragraph of text and generating, say, key implications or rephrased facts from it, sort of like our student rewriting their notes. So it's not just copying, it's transforming the information into something potentially more useful for learning. Exactly. But it gets deeper. Self-edits can also direct the optimization process itself. They might specify hyperparameters for the update, like use this learning rate or train for this many steps. Really, the model suggests its own training settings. Yes. And in some cases, like the few shot learning tasks they looked at, the self-edits can even invoke predefined tools like telling the system to apply data augmentation, maybe rotate an image if it's a visual task. This is a key academic point. The model isn't just learning from data, it's learning to prescribe its own learning procedure. Wow. The model writing its own lesson plan. That feels genuinely new. How is this whole process structured? The paper mentions two nested loops. That's right. SEAL uses this two-loop structure, one inside the other, an inner loop and an outer loop. They work together for the self-adaptation. Okay, let's break that down. The inner loop, 
What's its job? The inner loop is where the direct modification happens. This is where the model's weights actually get changed persistently. It takes the self-edit the model just generated. The instruction or the synthetic data. Right. And it uses that as the basis for a supervised fine-tuning step, an SFT step, on the model's parameters. So self-edit becomes the target for that fine-tuning. Precisely. And the source mentions they use LoRa low-rank adapters for this. It's a way to update these huge models efficiently without changing every single weight. Very useful here because a single self-edit might represent only a small bit of data, but you might do this many times. Yeah, so Laura makes these small frequent updates feasible. Okay, got it. That's the inner loop. Mm -hmm. Applying the change. What about the outer loop? The outer loop is where the learning strategy gets optimized. It's where the model learns how to generate good self-edits. And this is done using reinforcement learning, RL. Okay, RL. So the action the model takes in the RL sense is generating a self-edit. Exactly. The model proposes a self-edit. That self-edit gets fed into the inner loop, which updates a temporary copy of the model. Then that updated model gets evaluated on some downstream task like answering questions. And the performance on that task gives the reward signal. That's it. If the self-edit led to better performance, the policy that generated it gets a positive reward, making it more likely to generate similar helpful edits in the future. If it made things worse, it gets negative feedback. So the outer loop is training the model to be a better teacher for itself via the inner loop. You could put it that way, yeah. It's optimizing the policy for generating self-edits to maximize future task performance. And this whole nested structure outer loop optimizing the inner loop's learning process, that's classic meta-learning. It's learning to learn how to adapt. Learning to learn. Very cool. The source mentioned a specific RL algorithm, RESTEM. Why that one? Seem standard methods like PPO were tricky? Yeah, they reported that standard on policy methods were unstable, probably because of the self-referential nature of this whole thing. RESTEM is a mix of rejection sampling and SFT. Okay. How does that work, basically? It's pretty practical. The model generates multiple candidate self-edits. It tries each one out, inner loop update, then evaluation. It then rejects the ones that resulted in bad performance and only uses the ones that gave a positive reward, the good edits, to update the policy model using SFT. It simplifies things, approximating the goal with just a good-bad signal. All right, filters out the bad ideas before updating the strategy. Makes sense. Okay, so we have this sophisticated setup. Where do they actually test SEAL? What do the results show about its, you know, its innovative potential? They focused on two main areas to really showcase what it could do. Knowledge incorporation and few shot learning. Knowledge incorporation first. What was the goal there? Getting new facts into the model. Exactly. The goal was to see if SEAL could help the model truly internalize new facts from a piece of text so it could answer questions about that text later without seeing it again. Real memorization and understanding, not just retrieval. And what was the innovative method SEAL used here? academically speaking. Well, crucially, they didn't just fine tune on the raw text itself. The paper shows that doesn't really work well for this specific goal. Instead, SEAL was trained using that RL outer loop to generate synthetic data derived from the passage, specifically things like implications or rephrased key facts. Ah, like the student rewriting notes again. It learns to create the best study material for itself. That's the perfect analogy. And the results were genuinely surprising, really highlighting the academic value here. They tested this on a squad question answering task, but without giving the model the original passage at test time. Okay. SEAL, using its self-generated RL optimized implications, got 47.0% accuracy. Now, here's the kicker that beat the performance they got by fine-tuning on synthetic data generated by the much larger, very capable GPT-4.1 model. GPT-4.1's data only got 46.3%. But really, the model itself, through SEAL's RL process, created better training data for itself than what GPT-4.1 could generate for it. That's the standout finding. It strongly suggests that optimizing the data generation process with RL, tailored specifically to the model doing the learning, can be more effective than just using data from a bigger, supposedly smarter external model that isn't part of that optimization loop. That is fascinating. Yeah, and they mentioned this held up in other settings too, like continued pre-training. And importantly, it only took a couple of RL iterations for SEAL's data to surpass GPT-4.1's data. The policy learned quickly. A really powerful proof of concept for learning to learn. Okay, what about the second area, few shot learning? What was the challenge there? That was about adapting to completely new kinds of tasks using only a very small number of examples. They used the ARC benchmark, which involves abstract visual reasoning patterns. Very tricky. And how did SEAL tackle this? What was the innovation? 
Here, the innovation was that SEAL learned to essentially configure its own adaptation process. The self-edits weren't just data. They were instructions telling the model which tools to use, like should it apply image rotation or resizing as data augmentation, and how to set the optimization parameters for the inner loop fine-tuning, like the learning rate or the number of training steps. So presented with a new type of problem, just a couple of examples, the model generates a self-edit saying, OK, for this task, the best strategy seems to be rotate the images, use learning rate x, and train for y steps. Exactly. It's learning to parameterize its own adaptation strategy on the fly. And the results are pretty dramatic. SEAL hit a 72.5% success rate on the ARC subset they used. Compare that to trying to use similar self-edits without the RL optimization loop that only got 20%. And standard in context learning, 0%. Wow. Now, it didn't reach the theoretical Oracle score of 100%, which used human-designed optimal settings. But going from 20% without RL to over 70% with RL clearly shows the model learned a very effective autonomous adaptation strategy. Learning to generate better data, learning to set up its own learning process, these are definitely significant academic steps towards more autonomous AI. Yeah. But like all research, there must be limitations, right? What challenges did the paper acknowledge? Absolutely. A major one they flagged is catastrophic forgetting. It's a common issue when you learn things sequentially. Right. The problem we're learning new stuff makes the model forget old stuff. Precisely. They showed that if you apply SEAL updates one after another, learn from passage A, then passage B, then C, the performance on tasks related to passage A starts to drop off. Figure six in their paper illustrates this concept. The current SEAL setup doesn't have an explicit mechanism to protect previously learned knowledge. Okay, so it's good at incorporating one new thing, but maybe not at building up a large, stable body of knowledge over many updates yet. That seems to be the current state, yes. They identified this as a key direction for future academic work. Things like maybe changing the reward signal to also value retaining old knowledge, or borrowing techniques from the field of continual learning. Like methods that try to constrain how much weights can change, or maybe represent information in ways that interfere less. Exactly. Things like elastic weight consolidation, synaptic intelligence, or maybe exploring representational schemes that allow overlap without interference, sometimes called superposition. Lots of potential research avenues there. Got it. Protecting the old while learning the new. What other limitations? Another one is what they called context-dependent evaluation. Right now, that outer RL loop needs a defined downstream task with correct answers, ground truth, to calculate the reward for a self-edit. Ah, uh, you need to know if the update worked to train the policy. Right. And that limits how easily you could apply SEAL to just, say, reading the entire web, where most data is unlabeled and doesn't come with predefined Q&A pairs. So how do you scale it if you always need a labeled task for the RL reward? Well, their proposed solution, which is pretty ambitious academically, is to enable the model to generate its own evaluation questions or synthetic tests as it processes new unlabeled info. If it could do that reliably, it could create its own reward signal. So it would read something new, generate questions about it, try to answer them after a self-edit and see if it did better. Self-evaluation driving self-improvement. That's the vision. It would make it much more scalable. And of course, they also noted the computational cost. That RL loop, especially the evaluation part involving fine-tuning and testing for each potential self-edit, is quite resource-intensive. Yeah, that meta-learning aspect often adds overhead. Makes sense for research, but maybe a barrier for immediate deployment. But looking past the current hurdles, what are the bigger picture implications here? What does SEAL suggest for the future of LLMs? I think the implications are pretty profound, actually, and they connect directly to some big anticipated challenges in AI scaling. The paper specifically brings up the data wall. The idea that we're running out of high-quality human text data to train ever larger models, maybe around 2028 or so. Exactly. If you can't just keep feeding models more human data, how do you improve them? SEAL points to a possible answer. Let the models generate their own high-utility data and learning signals like we saw with the knowledge task skill generated more effective data for itself than GPT-4.1 did. That ability could be crucial for progress beyond the data wall. So self-generated data becomes a key resource. That alone makes this kind of work seem really important. What else? It definitely points towards true continual self-improvement. 
You can imagine future models not just accessing static databases, but actively ingesting new information, research papers, news feeds, whatever, and then using seal-like mechanisms to generate explanations, derive implications, and integrate that knowledge effectively. Creating a cycle of self-refinement. Precisely. Allowing models to stay current and deepen their understanding, especially in niche or fast-moving domains, without needing constant human-driven fine-tuning cycles. Like an AI that can genuinely keep up with its field by reading and integrating new publications on its own. That's a great way to think about it. And there could be synergy with reasoning models, too. Imagine an LLM reasoning through a complex problem, and based on that reasoning, deciding it needs to update its internal knowledge or parameters using a self-edit. So the reasoning process itself could trigger learning and adaptation. Potentially, yeah. Learning from thinking. And finally, this self-modification ability seems absolutely fundamental for building more capable AI agents. Agents that need to operate autonomously and learn from experience. Exactly. Agents need to learn incrementally from interactions, remember what they learned, and adapt to changing situations. SEAL's core idea, generating a self-edit after an experience to trigger a targeted update, provides a framework for how agents could achieve that kind of ongoing autonomous learning and adaptation. Okay, so pulling it all together, SEAL really does feel like a significant academic step. It's moving beyond models as just static repositories towards models that are active, self-improving learners, capable of guiding their own adaptation. Yeah, it shifts the focus. It's not just about training models on data anymore. It's about training models that learn how to effectively process, restructure, and even generate the right data for their own learning based on feedback and goals. It's a fundamental shift in perspective. It really is. Okay, that brings us towards the end of our deep dive on SEAL. And maybe here's a final thought for you, our listener, to chew on. If an AI can get good at teaching itself, figuring out what helps it learn best and how to integrate that knowledge, what does that really imply for how we'll train AI systems in the future? And perhaps more profoundly, what kinds of new capabilities might emerge from an intelligence that can genuinely engage in this kind of continuous, autonomous self-refinement? Definitely something to ponder the next time you find yourself learning something new.